Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to RV Daydream. And do you have bugs? <laughs> Let's go get rid of these things. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Doing a short installation video today on three items that basically new RV owners probably uh, should put on their RVs, especially if they're going to be sitting for a period of time. Now, in our case, we plan on traveling. And we haven't had much of a problem in the past, but why not? Let's go ahead and take care of it. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the bug screens that we've already installed on our Suburban Furnace. The link will be down below for these, and they're relatively easy to install. Uh, I did make some modifications to the way that the uh, springs were formed that clipped onto the vents. However, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to do that. And this is pretty much a, a straight on thing that anybody can do uh, I do want you to see this kind of stuff and that's the warning labels and I have heard rumors that if you install these vents that somebody may try to tell you that your warranty is void well I'm gonna tell you that you need to talk to the manufacturer of the product in this case this is for a suburban furnace uh, these two parts here they make them for your furnace if you have an Atwood just Take a look, uh, click the link in the description, and then make sure that you uh, look up one for an Atwood furnace. Uh, this is a suburban hot water heater, and you do need to take measurements on the square and the size that it is to make sure you get the right one. There are tons of them, so just don't go by the description. Go by the dimensions. And then this is a Dometic refrigerator. Yeah, the last RV that we had, we uh, made our own vents that went on the inside. And although they did pretty well, I think they restricted flow to some extent going to the uh, refrigerator potentially. Uh, so we're going to use the ones that uh, Camco makes. Again, the links will be down below for all these. So let's go ahead and break this stuff out and I'll show you how it looks going on. Uh, we're going to start with this bad boy right here. Yeah refrigerator vent Again, as I mentioned before we have a Dometic refrigerator what we did was measure the length of each one of these slots counted how many vents there were which there's three and then we also measured the depth once we found those dimensions uh, again we went online Camco the link will be down below in our case it's an RS 600 they make quite a few don't order the wrong ones just get your measurements don't assume get the measurements once you get these, there's not a lot of science to these. It's very simple. Basically, it's a screen that blocks the vents. Uh, still allows airflow, but blocks it from bugs. And uh, they're just held on with uh, some really decent wire ties. They look like that they're actually pretty strong considering how small they are. I've used this type in the past, and these are pretty decent. So let me go ahead and show you how they go on. Again, open the pack, stick them on. No big science secret here. Screens go in or on from the outside so don't think that you're putting them on the backside and you can see they they just fit in I mean they're again there's not a lot of science to all this once you have them in there you're going to uh, run the wire ties through uh, just uh, one per side maybe one here and one here so once the screen is being held in place like it is right now currently with my hand uh, you just run this down through I'm gonna cross uh, or angle the uh, crossbar that's on here and just kind of feed it right back into itself I'm doing this all with one hand uh, if you've got a helper of course it'll be a little bit easier and that's pretty much it Then I'm going to secure it just by wiggling it back and forth so now I'm going to do the other side and the other three and I'll show you what that looks like all right so there's how all of them look uh, and the first one the top one that I did uh, I noticed that uh, the support in the middle was a little bit flimsy so the next two I moved them inboard a little bit so that to support a little bit more of the center and that worked out fine so I just went four of these crossbars over and then uh, secured it uh, I actually have extra zip strips or wire ties so I might uh, just go ahead and secure it up here to help that out but that's it it is done you can see what it looks like from the outside uh, not a bad look uh, pretty decent and uh, you know as far as insects coming in I'm sure they could still find some sort of way to get in there uh, rodents though uh, that would be definitely more difficult here <laughs> that's for sure all right so this next one's going to be a little bit tricky to shoot but I'll get something out here to help out uh, basically what we're going to do is put a screen that's over this and another screen over this now 
as far as this again do not block any openings they actually mean covering them up somehow uh, I don't know what the deal is why they would think that those screens could potentially restrict flow of air either coming in or out but the only way that would happen is if those screens were dirty again the link's going to be down below for this I think this brand's a little bit better than the other ones uh, for the fact that they give you much more springs now the reason that I talked about the wrong size on this is because we actually ordered one that was the wrong size and the other brand which was more popular uh, actually only came with two springs to hold this on and uh, these guys are good they give you four springs uh, for each one of these screens which that's a lot but yeah you could see I mean come on how is this gonna restrict flow <laughs> I mean geez it ain't gonna hurt it really so the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and open your door and I'm gonna remove these two screws because I don't want to work with the door on the RV trying to stretch those springs plus this will give you a better shot so just a couple of screws and this thing will come off now if you don't want to take the screws off if you want to try it differently uh, these tabs that are down here you could actually bend them uh, to get it to come off of the hinge but then you've got to bend them back and I, I prefer not to uh, you know make it to where the paint may flake off here so two screws will be done all right, so you can see what I did is I pushed one of the springs up through and I kind of lined it up with all these slats that are in here because you want it to pretty much stretch straight on and then be able to place it in that vent. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like whenever you're putting them through because it is a little tricky, but for the most part, you can understand what's happening here. Yep, there you go. And again, we're going to cover all four corners as best as possible and then stretch them into the vents you know just through the lip what we're going to do is use those springs to hold uh, these on to the cover and you're going to do that by first putting the spring on to the screen that you're going to attach and then at that point you're going to use these to go through the front of the screen into these squares that's the best part about this tool it fits in any of these little squares and you're going to stretch that spring and place it over the lip for these vents and in this case you're going to go through one of these squares in four of the corners to hold it onto this vent. Here's a tip you want to check the tool to make sure that it actually fits over the spring. Uh, the tool that we had before actually needed opened up just a little bit because the spring didn't want to go in the groove quite as easily as this one does. Uh, since I have two I'm going to check them both. See there's a perfect example this one does not work this one does not go over the spring so you can see that's an issue. Uh, you can just open it up with a flat tip screwdriver. Just be careful not to break it off. All right, now that I've got them positioned uh, in the manner that I want, I'm uh, making sure that they're oriented uh, so that the hook will actually connect into the vent relatively easy. Um, you can see the vents are directional. Now you only have to really worry about the direction of the, the springs just on this part because you can only hook it in one way and you can do it a couple different ways you can actually face them all down or all up however you feel um, I'm going to face them all down so we hook the straight edge and not this weird lip uh, that'll give us more tension so let's go ahead and try the first one again we'll just push this down through the square and uh, these things bounce around a lot Might have to reach in on the first one to get it to where it wants to hold. Kind of cheating. And now we're just going to uh, push it down in, twist it a little, and uh, hope that it hooks. <laughs> Just like that. So we got that one hooked. Let's go ahead and go on to the next one. Yeah, that one lined up a little bit easier for me. Oh, did come off though. And again, we're going to go through the cover, twist it, and release it. 
Now you might have to try and do these a couple different ways to make sure that they uh, go the way you want them to go in the slot that you want them to go. You might have to unhook them and rehook them again. Go. Let's look in the back side. Yeah, you can see this one's just kind of hanging on, so we're going to help it out by moving it around. Yeah, not bad. So, that one's secure. Again, not a lot of science, but that's all that's required. So, we're going to repeat the process for the big one here, and this one's actually going to be a lot easier to do because, again, the springs don't have to be in any specific direction. All right, so they're all on there. You can see the back sides, what they look like. Everything's hooked really well. Uh, just spread these out over a couple of spans of this metal if you can. Make sure that your guards, your original guard that's in here, the original screen, that it doesn't come unclipped. If so, just go ahead and push it back into its, you know, its places and, and give it a little bend. Make sure it's straight. But that's essentially it. Now the only downfall I can see is, um, you know, manipulating the, the little tab that folds down. Uh, might be a little bit harder to get to. Um, you can bend the screen around to make it work, but other than that, let's go ahead and put it back on. Uh, like I said, the, the tab is a little bit harder to get hold of, uh, but not so much that you got to worry about it. And these, of course, they're going to move around. They're just held on with springs, but you can access everything. You can see here, just fine. Whenever you're putting your cover back on, just make sure you line it up um, because if you get it too low or too high, you're going to have a problem securing this little latch. Uh, just like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty pretty decent for the most part. This one here again, they move around, not a big deal. That's kind of what their design is. And then uh, this one here. So all three bug screens are in place. Uh, just be patient with the, the springs. They're a little bit to work with, but you can do it. Not a big deal. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Again, all the links are down below. Click the links, it'll take you right to them. And I hope to see you out there. Bye.